Tonight on The Roast, Queensland Parliament is rocked by a sex scandal and mass murderer Anders Breivik applies for university. But first, it's day three of the election campaign and Mark Humphreys is on hand to bring us up to speed with all the latest. In addition to going head-to-head -head with Tony Abbott, Kevin Rudd is now going head-to-head -head with Rupert Murdoch. Two old dinosaurs butting heads? What would that look like? Hmm. Following on from Monday's front page of Murdoch's Daily Telegraph, encouraging readers to vote violently, Kevin Rudd said yesterday that Murdoch was acting selfishly because he unashamedly hates the government's national broadband network, as it represents a commercial challenge to Foxtel. And you know what that means? It challenges Australia's ability to watch reruns of That's So Raven. Jazz Twemlow is our man in America. Jazz, what should Rupert Murdoch be doing in the future? Retiring. Let someone else fund the media? Lachlan? James? Sarah? Not Sarah. Mark? Hmm. Thank you, Jazz. In other election news, Labor MP David Bradbury has become the first casualty of the Reserve Bank's interest rates cut, stumbling badly during an interview about the subject on Sydney's easy listening radio station, Smooth FM. Bradbury started off on the wrong foot as he wasn't actually scheduled in for an interview, but instead spontaneously called in to speak to Smooth FM's Glenn Daniel. Come on, David. You know there are only three reasons you're allowed to spontaneously call up an easy listening radio station. A love song request, share an anecdote about the worst birthday present you ever received, or just to ask if you've won something for no reason. I don't see interest rates on that list. Do you, David? Because it seems like you do. If interest rates are not cut today, then Mr Hockey and Mr Rabbit will be the only third people in the country that will welcome that decision. No, that's uh, obviously... Think... David, that's not... That's obviously not right. What he said was... Oh, please, yeah. please, please. Yes, Glenn, 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 help him out, Glenn. He wasn't expecting a grilling from a host on a radio station known for its pro buble agenda. Not so smooth after all. No, no I'm, like just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, just trying to... Trying to... You, you know the context of what he was saying, well, well, Mr. You're trying well, to twist it into that the, the Coalition wants higher interest rates, which you know is a nonsense. Sorry? Sorry you called? I bet you are. What's your surname, Glenn? Uh-oh. Are you going to try and rhyme it with something funny, David? Because I don't think that's enough to save you. Daniel, why? Uh-oh. Nothing rhymes with Daniel, except granule. And that's not funny. This is extraordinary. I've, I've never experienced anything like this. Do you, you do this all the time? Talk on the radio? It's his job! Now, with the success of Glenn Daniel's political smackdown on Bradbury, you can bet FM radio will start becoming even more political. Ooh, you're on Easy FM. It's David here, keeping you company for the drive home. Hope those petrol prices aren't pinching your back pocket too hard. <laughs> All right, it's 10 past the hour. 13, 10, 10 is the number. I want to hear where's the weirdest place you've ever passed legislation. A dumpster. In other election news, Tony Abbott has today committed to cut the company tax rate by 1.5% if elected. And if that sounds familiar, it's because he made the same commitment prior to the 2010 election. And if you can recall how that election panned out, tell Tony Abbott. The 1.5% cut for businesses is also equal to the 1.5% levy that Abbott will be charging big businesses, meaning big businesses will have to hand over their money only to get the same money back again, except it'll now feel sticky and smell like the government's wallet. In the words of Bryn Edelston to her old gross husband, I don't want to touch it. Back to you, Tom. Next up tonight, big news out of Queensland. But before I get to that, let me just take a sip from this delicious glass of red wine. Mm. The mistress of a Queensland MP who photographed his penis in a glass of red wine <laughs> says she enjoyed the people's money when the pair went on official trips together. Really? The first line? That didn't even give me a chance to put on my astonishment bib. Now, the MP in question is Peter Dowling, the member for Redlands, who yesterday apologised to Queensland Parliament for texting photos of his member. In fact, according to the London Evening Standard, since 2011, he sent his mistress as many as 4,000 explicit pictures and texts. Which, if true, works out to be five and a half sects every single day for two years. Also, boobs. <laughs> but why did he put his wang in a glass of red wine? Aside from not being sexy, everyone knows you don't blend a fruity red with an old dry white. Now, before I find out what role Dowling held in Queensland Parliament, let me just have another sip. Peter Dowling was recently appointed as the head of the Parliamentary Ethics Committee. I was ready for that one. But if the head of an ethics committee is Instagramming his own coco van in an extramarital affair, maybe we need to take a long, hard look at Australia's sex education policy. 
So we did. And it turns out that right now, the Australian Curriculum Assessment and Reporting Authority has released its final draft of the Health and Physical Education National Curriculum. And in terms of sex education value, well, critics have called it dreadful and a big waste of time and taxpayers' dollars. Why? Because it does not mention sexually transmissible infections, blood-borne diseases or HIV, nor does it directly address homophobic bullying. And it is a problem when sex ed is leaving out both the sex and the ed, and instead instructs students how to enhance their own and others' health, safety, well-being and physical activity participation in varied and changing contexts, with activities such as circus skills, bushwalking and rhythmic gymnastics. OK, so kids, that's sex. Yeah. What do you mean you're confused? Hi, what's your name? Uh, Sean, what's yours? Mystique. Hey Mystique, uh, what do you want to do today? I'm going to enhance your health, safety, well-being and physical activity participation in varied and changing contexts. Okay, yeah? You see, we all appreciate that parents feel awkward about having the chat, which is why sex ed classes exist, so that they can outsource that awkwardness. But if teachers don't want to have the chat either, if, as sexual health advocate Alicia Ross says, they decide they don't want to teach it, then they could replace lessons on sexual health with lessons on abstaining from sex, and that's terrifying. See, if you want your kids to be abstinent, don't not teach them about sex, teach them about sex. So you're thinking about having sex, but you need more information. Well, I'm here to give you some honest advice to help your first time be a good time. Should I be scared? Oh God, yes. But take some comfort in the fact that you're both just as terrified as each other. But hopefully as time passes, you'll get better at pretending you're not. There are also some things that you just can't plan for. The moment your eyes lock mid-coitus and you realise you've never been more vulnerable in your entire life and you are absolutely terrified. Or when you roll over and notice the family photo on your bedside table as mum, dad and your younger sister watch you silently judging. But don't worry, it'll be over much faster than you think it will and you'll both be able to just lie there too embarrassed to say anything. Does it get easier? Oh God, yes. But you will continue to make mistakes all the time. All the time. In fact, as you get your confidence up, you'll inevitably do or say something in the heat of the moment that you think is sexy but is really humiliating and a little bit too honest. And flashbacks to that moment will haunt your dreams for the rest of your life. But hold on to that feeling, because one day you're going to want to send a sexy photo to your partner. And while it might seem like a fun and flirty idea, remember that the other person is getting, with zero context, a picture of your penis in a glass of wine. Anything else I should know? Use protection so you don't get an STI because they're definitely not going to teach you that in school anymore. And finally tonight, Anders Breivik, the man responsible for Norway's worst ever massacre, has been denied entry into Oslo University. Not because he was responsible for Norway's worst ever massacre, but because he isn't considered sufficiently qualified to start a course in political science since Breivik never completed his secondary education. Mm, sounds like Anders might need some career advice. Now Anders, I've had a look at your credentials and I've come up with some career paths that Norway will gladly offer you. So okay, first option, you can stare blankly at a wall without any intellectual stimulus for 21 years and think about what you've done. Option two, you can spend some time working on a prison wall chalk tally, you know those ones that criminals have in the movies with the little groups of five. Or finally, option three, a slow guilt-ridden death, so I guess your best option is probably staying there, in prison. And while it's admirable that Scandinavia has this culture of second chances and education and human rights for all, even though some might not deserve it, I just want to say, Norway, sometimes it's okay to be not so Scandinavian. Sometimes it's okay to be a little more American and say, you're not going to learn political science. You're not going to go to university. In fact, you'll be lucky if you ever get to go outside again. Whoa, whoa, whoa Tom. <laughs> I know the University of Oslo rejected his application, mm -hmm. but according to Brevik's lawyer, he's been collecting points to study at university. He studied mathematics this summer and will certainly study other material to reach the required level. So when Anders does finally get the points required to pursue his higher education, I believe I found the perfect place for him to study. 
Really? Yeah, let's watch. Are you thinking about studying political science even though you've committed the worst atrocity Norway has ever seen? Well, you'll feel right at home here at the University of... Are you serious? Is he serious? Is he being... F Are you being f***ing serious? Here at AYS, IHS, IHBF, AYBFSU, we have a beautiful campus and you must be wondering, how do I get into this prestigious university? Do I have the points required? Well, to answer that question, let's talk to our admissions officer. So Jazz, how can Anders get into our university? Well, it's very simple. If you have committed terrible, heinous atrocities, you can take all the points you've earned from your studying and f*** off! So why choose the University of Are You Serious? Is he serious? Is he being f Are you being f serious? Why? Because not everyone deserves an education. God, what a downer of a story. Yeah, I know. But you know what to turn that frown upside down? No. Let's listen to some Easy FM over the credits. Yes, let's! Hit it! Ooh, you're on Easy FM. It's David here, keeping you company for the credits. Soon I'll be joined live in the studio by Ronan Keating, who will be singing his signature tune, You Say It Best When You Say Nothing At All. I will then grill him about Marxism and its relative value to contemporary economics. That's coming up soon on Ooh, Easy FM.